All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at inputs. I have about three examples towards the end here, but first we got to look at the docs. So let's rush on over and check that out. So we see that it says the input component is a component that is used to get user input in a text field. That's uh, it's pretty straightforward. I think we all know that by now, uh, but we pull it in this way, import, input. There's not like, you know, some of these have, um, you, know, you have to assemble them, right? You have a bunch of components coming on in. If this is just a straight up input, it's the only thing you really need. And so here we have a basic usage. And so you just have an input, a placeholder, which I do recommend having a placeholder. Sometimes when you're making a product for yourself or someone else, you know, everyone kind of knows what you do, but then you get someone new on the team or a new user on the, um, on the product side or on the user side, and it's not always clear, right? So just go ahead and always have some kind of placeholder there, some kind of meaningful text, because that really helps. We see that we could change the size, extra small, small, medium, and large here. We see the examples on down here below. And so large is pretty freaking large, right? I, I'm, I don't know when you would use something that big, but maybe also depends on the size and flow of other things that you would need and use in your, you know, web application. And you do it just by having size equals and then X, uh, XS, SM, MD, or LG right here. And so we could also change the appearance of an input. So we have outline, unstyled, flushed, and filled right here. And so we have the outline, which is, you know, the, seems to be the default. We have filled, which, you know, it's filled in with this kind of gray-ish kind of look here. Unflushed, which looks like it's it's sitting outside of like the margin or padding kind of constraints here. As you notice, these two are tucked in, but this is just kind of hanging out. But you still get this underline right here as we click into it. And then there's just straight up unstyle, which is like this raw, naked input. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the unstyled, but the uh, outline and filled I think are pretty cool. Flush there, you know, I like that one. But unstyled, just be careful because it, it could be hidden to your users. It may not be apparent that there may be an input box there. We could also slap on some left and right add-ons, or sometimes I, I say I want to say icons, but you could give meaning to the left and the right side here. And so we have an input left add-on, and we have an input right add-on. Now, if we scroll back up to the top, maybe they should put input and then the right add-on and all the other stuff in here. I know it's not essential to a basic input, but it's kind of weird that halfway down, it's like, oh, hey, here's some, here's some other stuff related to an input you could put in here. Also, they have an input group. I actually may have scrolled down too far. But we have these input left add-on, and so you're going to put that inside of an input group, and so that's going to position the left on the left side. And then we have the one for the input right. We have this dot com here. And this is just a way to show what your users should enter here. So they don't have to do the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Maybe you dynamically for this phone number, you know, have something from their profile. So you could bring in the plus 309 or 217 or what are some weird other area codes I've seen in my day? Three, wait, 606. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Those are like the, the three most recent ones I've seen here. But you could do that, and that will just help them uh, guide them through easier. And you could add an element on the inside here. So we have this input left. We have, you know, we've already covered this right here. But we have this uh, input type telephone, placeholder telephone number. And so where are we getting this phone number from right here? Well, it's coming in. It looks kind of weird because I would expect it to kind of come in from the input, but it's actually coming in from the input left element. You're giving it the uh, children prop right here, and all you're doing is feeding in uh, one of the icons. It could be from Chakra. It could be wherever else you're getting your icons. You plop it in here, and you can style it just like any other component. And so... These are all gray in here. If you wanted to give them some color, that's, you could do that as well. But that's how you add um, you know, icons technically inside, even though they're still just input left elements. 
And then here uh, we have this example of the password input example. So if I wanted to, I could do type this in. And then what did I type? No, oh, I typed poop. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I think I'll eternally have a 13 year old sense of humor, but it's just showing you that you can manage the state. And as you click, you could, you know, churn off the uh, feature for um, the show or hide, which is the type right here. So we have the, you know, if show is, you know, true or false, you show the text. Otherwise, it's a password and it's just set to these dots right here. This is another example of controlled input. This is just another way to show you how to capture data coming into your input field here. And we're not gonna cover this because we, we just kind of went over it above, but also we cover this in the example. You could also uh, change the focus or error border colors. And that's really, really easy to do here. So we have the focus border color is pink and we could also have is uh, invalid here, which is automatically set to true. And this is just another way of guiding your user through and saying, hey, maybe your you know, input isn't valid and we can't continue forward uh, until you fix this, right? So maybe they click submit, there's a validator, and then the page doesn't navigate, and then this highlights red, and it says, yo, you have a nine in your first name. You can't have numbers uh, for first names. So you could do stuff like that, and it's just nice they give that to you out of the box there. And here's some props, lots of props, lots of things to go over, lots of things to use, but let's see the stuff in motion and in action. I believe I have three examples for you, so let's get to coding. So the first example for inputs we're gonna look at is really just gonna look at the basics of them and how to change the sizes. So without further ado, let's do that. As you see here, I have the V stack aligning all these up so they look pretty decent. And then I have each of the inputs coming on in here. And as you can see, there's placeholder text that you could have in here, which will disappear as soon as you click in and start typing and doing all that business. And they come in four different flavors of sizes. We have extra small, small, medium, and large. And as you click on them, you can see that it does this focus, makes the border around it a little bit darker. And it does the same as you go down. And so this is kind of the basic things that you could do with input. So in the next section, what we're going to look at is more of the variance, add-ons, things you could do to um, spruce these up a little bit. So now let's get rid of the basic input stuff we have here. And let's introduce some stuff called input groups. We could have some add-ons in here. And let's just get, let's, I can't speak tonight. Let's just get to coding and then I'll explain it after it's done. So now we have the stack here and we have the spacing, which is really just making this gap here in between these two different components. So we have this input group up here and this input group down here. Now let me space these out because when I can, I like to make sure my code is just easy to read here. And so if we look in here, we have this input group, which is wrapping this whole thing here. We have input left add-on. And this takes the attribute here of children is plus 555, whatever you use for your area code. And then you can come in here and then type your phone number on in. 
and the placeholder says phone number. Now we could get even more creative anon if we wanted to. And it, before we go even further into the uh, children here, you notice for the size here, this is actually coming down into the input and saying, I want this to be small. Like a lot of groups that we've seen, input group is no different than like button group and all that other stuff. And so we can make it large as well, which is kind of nice because sometimes as you have a lot of code going on in here, it's nice to move maybe some of the little tidbits up above so it's just maybe easier to manage or doesn't get lost in other details. So we have an input left add-on here and the children attribute is, you know, whatever I said this to be. So HTTP, HTTPS colon forge slash forge slash. And then we have a write add-on for the dot com right here, which is pretty neat. So these are some ways that you could take your inputs, um, move them up to the next level here. And you could also give more direction and meaning to your user when they are entering information on your page. And yeah, so in the next section, what we're actually going to do is take this um, input group and these inputs and I'm going to show you how to use state with them uh, hooks and all that other stuff for a small example to show you how to uh, extract info from it. All right in this section here which is the last section what we're going to do is create a uh, input group we're going to have the right element stuff make it look really nice here and we're going to add some state in here I'm going to show you how to roughly handle maybe a uh, case where you need to keep track of the information coming on in. So what we have right here is this input, and then we have this input right element here, and you can have input left elements too. So this is kind of like the add-on, except this is a wrapper where you could put other items on the inside. So in this case, I'm putting a button in here, and depending upon the state of what show is, so let me move this here. So depending on what the state of show is, it's either going to say, hide or show here. So let me type something in. I like my dog, Bernie. And so if I want to click show, this updates to I like my dog, Bernie, because I have a hard time typing when it's just dots here. And so as we click this, it's toggling between, you know, setting this to true or false. So if you wanted to, you could use this as a way on your site to have visibility when your user wants it when they're entering a long password. And trust me, um, it's not always you know the best to be typing your password way out in the open, especially if someone could look over your shoulder. But it is nice sometimes to double check before you hit enter for the third time before you get locked out to know exactly what it is you typed. And so this is just a little fun example right here of how to use state and toggle between showing and not showing you know, a, um, a password. Let me actually just fix this typo right here. But yeah, that's how to use input. I'm sure you could do a million things with it beyond this. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, um, like, share, subscribe, leave some comments below, all the good stuff. Uh, I love making these videos and I'll see y'all in the next one.